Welcome to Mission Sunlight. Today our travels will take us to visit the Republic of Korea, often referred to as Land of the Morning Calm. Located on a peninsula of the Asian continent, Korea is divided into two political entities, the Republic of Korea, better known as South Korea, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea. Bordered by China in the northwest and Russia in the northeast, the Korean peninsula is almost the same size as the country of Ghana. History records the first establishment of a kingdom in this region 2,300 years before the birth of Christ. Through the centuries, Korea endured threats from Mongol invaders, invasions from Manchuria, occupation and colonization by Japan, and a division of the country into North and South Korea in 1948. In June 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea. This action quickly escalated into the Korean War. During the next three years of fighting throughout South Korea, most of the cities were destroyed. Following the war, South Korea experienced rapid economic growth, and today it has become a major economy on the world stage. Christianity made its first inroads into Korea through books that were circulated in the 17th century. During the 18th century, Korean ambassadors and merchants met Christians in Beijing, China. By 1789, there was growing concern on the part of leaders about the growth of Christianity in this traditionally Buddhist country. An edict of suppression was ordered, which was enforced for three years. This was followed by persecution of Christians, and thousands were tortured and killed. The good news of the gospel cannot be suppressed forever. In 1832, Dr. K.A. Gutzloff, a Protestant surgeon and translator was able to visit Korea and distribute Chinese Bibles. Several other missionaries, some of whom gave their lives to tell the story of Jesus to Koreans, followed him. Koreans were finally able to read that story for themselves in their own language for the first time in 1882. In 1904, Mr. Lee Hung Hyun was in Gobe, Japan, waiting for a ship that would take him to Hawaii. As he was walking down the street, he noticed a signboard, the Seventh-day Sabbath, Jesus Second Coming Church. Mr. Lee was immediately interested and went into the church and he met there Pastor Kunia Hide, the evangelist. Mr. Lee learned more about the Adventist messages from him and he became eager to tell others what he had learned. The next day, Mr. Lee brought his friend, Mr. Son Hung Jo, to the Bible study. Both of them got baptized. Mr. Lee left for his trip to Hawaii. By the way, Mr. Son came back to Korea and he began to share what he had learned from Pastor Kunia Hide in Japan. Now, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in South Korea has grown to over 220,000 baptized church members who faithfully worship each Sabbath in the 713 churches throughout the country. During this quarter, the World Church will turn its focus on the East Central Korean Conference, which includes the capital city of Seoul within its boundaries. In our district, there are about 7 million people. Our church members are around 70,000. There are 210 churches with 204 pastors and ministers serving in our conference. These members are faithfully reaching out to their neighbors, friends, and families who haven't heard of their Savior. We have an evangelistic meeting that brings together about 200 churches. Everyone is focused on this mission now. And the second one is that we want to be made disciples, so we have a discipleship program. Many people have been trained in discipleship, so we are expecting a lot from this program. The third one is the small group. Many churches have been involved in the small group, and the churches are growing because of it. The church hasn't forgotten the young people in their midst. Ministry to them is important, and church leaders are training and welcoming them into leadership. We have 10 elementary, middle, and high schools in our conference, so we have a hope for our young people. They are the pillars of our conference because there are many young people in our church. 
There are about 17 pastors working at the school right now and about 4,300 students. In Korea, there are about 1 million foreigners in this area. Most of the people are non-Christian and we have a burden and responsibility to support and share the gospel to those people. The Korean Eastern Union is already seeing growth among the international population who is coming to its region because of work and school. We have three different foreign churches in our conference and one is a Filipino church. There are about 120 members worshiping. The second is Chinese Korean and some of those people are like Korean. About 40 or 50 are worshiping together right now. The third church is a Japanese church, but those churches are in very poor circumstances. They are renting buildings that are very small. We want to help those people worship very freely and help support them. My name is Ed Rivera and I'm originally from the Philippines and presently working here in Korea at our institution, Samyuk Middle School, right here in Seoul. At present I am um, working for the Filipino International Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Korea. This is one of uh, the English churches here in Korea that basically uh, uh, use English as our medium of communication. The church has experienced growth from the beginning. Feels like church established in uh, 2002 and we are now in our ninth year and we have just celebrated it. Um, we celebrated it last year and this is our tenth year. Many different countries are represented among the congregation. We have members from the USA, from Canada, from South Africa, from Kenya, even from South America, from Peru, also from the Philippines. Uh, we also uh, have members from Russia. So uh, it's truly really an international congregation here in Korea. Even before the 1988 Olympics here in Seoul, Korea, this city was an international crossroads. Now the Seventh-day Adventist Church is preparing to reach the migrant worker population with a multicultural center here on this site. Our church has a vision to establish a multicultural center for, for uh, international community. One of the vision of our church is to organize a community center that will cater the needs of our um, migrant workers here in Korea. We will uh, offer a uh, shelter for them, those who had been uh, out, out of work for a while, and we can be their uh, guidance counselor to help them with their family-related uh, problems as well. And also uh, problems like uh, in their working place. We can be, act, we can act as the bridge, uh, connecting the, connecting them to the Korean community here. An established center will also allow individuals to attend church-sponsored classes and seminars, working together with the Korean church members, build strong ties within the church community, and enables a greater spiritual impact within both the foreign and Korean populations. We have some members who are Korean, who are. Uh, uh, helping us to coordinate with the Korean uh, employers here. So uh, we, we believe that in this way we can be able to reach them and we can be able to help them what they need and eventually invite them to church and uh, have fellowship with us and by God's time by baptize them. It is within this setting that this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will make a difference in the lives of many people. Our church is one of the recipients of the 13th Sabbath School uh, offerings next year, of the first quarter, and we praise God for that. We've been praying for this, and I believe the local conference, the KUC, the Union Conference, will join hands together to fulfill our dreams, to, uh, to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ here in Korea. Non-traditional evangelism is proving to be effective to build relationships within the international community. This year, the Fields Deck Church will have an evangelistic uh, effort. Uh, one is uh, we usually hold our uh, camp meeting 
And through this camp meeting, we invite our non-SDA friends to join us into the camp. And uh, we, uh, we do this just to build friendship with, uh, with the international community here. That's one way of our evangelistic uh, effort here. Another one is uh, we have a, uh, a program here that we uh, give flyers, information about our church and things that we do in our church and services that we offer. We go to a community where we find a lot of international uh, uh, community uh, people there and we, uh, we uh, distribute these flyers to them. Making a difference in the lives of children also creates opportunities to introduce them and their families to Jesus. Another major uh, plans that our church are um, planning this year is to establish a daycare child center. Daycare child center of Filsda. Um, in Korea, sending kids to a daycare center is really expensive. And most uh, parents, they want to um, uh, help their kids learn English at, at an early age. So uh, the church has a plan of establishing this child daycare care center that will cater these uh, parents who are sending their kids to a non-Christian daycare center. And uh, we will offer them a, 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 a Christian values that, uh, that we can uh, teach to them. And, and we can also help our members. In fact, our members have, uh, we have a lot of kids in our, in our church. And uh, we want to train them in uh, the way that they should go. And, and we want to share this to the community at large. So I guess, uh, and I believe that this is a, a much friendlier way or a gateway to reach out parents to come to church and in the future, again, invite them and get acquainted with them and introduce our church uh, to them. Thank you for your special care and your support. We really appreciate your dedication concerning our conference. Because of your endless support and prayer, I believe that we will be blessed. Thank you and I pray that God will bless your church and your families. The disciples in the New Testament were called to foreign lands to bear witness to how their lives changed after having a relationship with Jesus. Now modern disciples are following their example. Although you may never have the opportunity to travel to Korea, you can be a part of being the hands and feet of Jesus. By planning now, you will be ready to share in the 13th Sabbath offering on Sabbath, March 31. Reporting from Seoul, South Korea, this is Mission Sunlight.